Sisters and brothers, this is a defining moment in the life of the church. Defining moments occur at the juncture of fear and hope, challenge and opportunity, hesitancy and faithful response. The church has faced defining moments before. Times when deliberate choices had to be made to clarify priorities in the face of difficult circumstances. Such defining moments in the past brought the best out of us and prepared us for the next phase of our journey with God. What is this defining moment? In general, it can be framed by two questions. Will we allow certain circumstances and issues to divert us from our mission? Or will we clarify our mission priorities and focus on what matters most? It will come as no surprise to anyone that the church, like other similar organizations, is facing financial challenges because of adverse economic conditions. And I'm aware that this is a major concern to many of our members. So let me address that concern first. The church's long-term financial viability is not in jeopardy. The sacrificial generosity of past generations, the foresight of previous leaders, and the disciplined application of our financial policies in the present continue to secure the church's long-range financial future. However, the continuing recession has caused a decline in world ministries giving and projected income from church investments. After carefully evaluating this situation, world church officers have decided we must reduce our world ministries budget. Our current plan calls for a decrease of about $4 million. Most of the reduction will occur in fiscal year 2010, which begins in July 2009. This projected decrease will require a reduction in world church-funded ministries support services, and staffing levels throughout the world and here at International Headquarters. How will we respond? Before addressing that question, I want to personally thank all who are consistent contributors through local and world ministries mission tithes, especially those who are on fixed or limited incomes. Your steady support, especially during difficult times, encourages us. You are already doing your part, and the church is grateful for your generosity. I suppose the current financial difficulty could be described solely in economic terms. However, as I have reflected on this matter, I have come to the conclusion that the economic situation actually reveals a spiritual issue 
that will require a spiritual response. One of the church's enduring principles is grace and generosity. We respond to God's grace, especially as revealed in Jesus Christ, by giving generously and by graciously receiving the generosity of others. This is a deeply spiritual principle that arises from the very nature of God. We are called according to God's eternal purposes to grow spiritually throughout our lives in grace and generosity. So what is our understanding of the spiritual relationship between God's grace the gift of the gospel, discipleship, generosity, and church mission? Is it limited to what mostly serves our personal needs or what we like the most? Is it defined by casual, sporadic giving while we apply most of our life's resources to other pursuits? Or do we understand the heart of the gospel revealed in Christ is about compassionate, generous living that mirrors the generous nature of God? In community of Christ, when we become disciples of Jesus, we do not just become members of a local congregation. We become members of a worldwide faith community. The church is an international body that God has called into being to fulfill divine purposes related to the coming peaceable reign of God on earth. Discipleship involves responding to God's gift in Christ by giving consistently and generously according to our full and we hope growing capacity throughout our lives to support local and world ministries. Such support is one of the most evident ways we express our spiritual commitment to the vision of Christ. Local and world ministries giving are equally important for the church to fulfill its divinely mandated mission. And I want to be clear with congregational leaders and our priesthood on this matter. We cannot expect growing generous response now or in the future as the economy recovers if we are not currently teaching the principles of a disciple's generous response to all ages. Those principles include saving wisely, spending responsibly, and sharing generously through local and world ministries tithes. And we cannot teach and preach those principles with integrity if we are not fully embodying and practicing those principles within our lives. With that said, I would now like to focus on the church's vision for mission today. After several years of discussion and prayerful reflection, church leaders have presented an understanding of church identity, mission, message, and beliefs in a document entitled, We Share. The document we share was created by a diverse group of church leaders and members from throughout the world. 
As we met together on various occasions, we were richly blessed by the Holy Spirit. As we wrestled with important questions about church identity, mission, and message from multiple cultural perspectives. Eventually, we jointly discovered what I believe describes the heart and essence of the church's identity, mission, and message today. As the document was completed, I was given clear affirmation by the Spirit that it presents ample direction for the next chapters of our journey as a people of God. And if enough members and congregations embody its principles, the church will move dramatically forward in fulfilling its mission. Engaging this document is not about fussing over details or looking for exceptions. It is about being captured by the vision and direction that God graciously has provided us through the combined insights of our worldwide church family. When the principles in this document become the descriptors of our behavior rather than just ideals, we will become the community of Christ that God is calling us to become. To become the community of Christ that God is calling us to become, we must honestly and forthrightly address some important issues. The first has to do with how we relate to our history. Our early church story is the story of faithful, inspired people who heard the call to embrace and share the gospel of Christ more fully. 